Can horse manure like this help speed up the decomposition of wood chips? Let the experiment begin. In my seemingly never-ending quest to find a faster way to break down wood chips, here's what we're doing today. Barrel, wood chips, manure, blood meal. We're gonna layer them and see how fast it takes them all to turn into compost. We're gonna be layering wood chips and horse manure into this barrel at a ratio of one to one on a volume basis. And we're gonna be wetting and adding blood meal as we go with this stick in the center that can be moved around to provide aeration as the pile ages and matures. Then we'll do what all humans want to do. We'll be lazy, we're just going to let the pile sit. We'll add water and blood meal as needed, if needed, but most of this is hands-off, passive. We'll let the microbes do the work while we watch and observe from afar. One of the biggest challenges, I think, in this particular experiment is going to be getting the moisture ratio right because manure wants to oversaturate very easily. It wants to get too wet very easily and wood chips want to dry out very easily so i'm hoping you have something that wants to get really wet and something that really wants to get very dry and when you put them together you end up with an optimum moisture ratio so i'm going to have to be careful here about not overwatering, but also adding enough water one great question to be asking is why do this experiment in the first place? What's the point of it? Well, here in Southern California, we have an abundance of horse manure and wood chips, and wouldn't it be great if we could turn those into compost as fast as possible? The manure part's easy. We can convert horse manure to compost pretty quickly. That's simple. Wood chips are a lot harder. The carbon to nitrogen ratio is a lot higher, making it harder to break down, meaning it takes more time to break down. So if we could speed it up or kind of hack that process, then we'd be able to turn these wood chips into something that we could use in the garden a lot sooner. And one of the reasons I love wood chips is because they're naturally chemical free. Unlike hay and manure and straws and even municipal compost that may be contaminated with yard-based or commercial-based pesticides or herbicides, these don't have any of that on them. People aren't spraying hardwood trees out here. So if you're getting a wood chip, you're getting a pretty clean product and you're going to end up with clean compost. What does success look like in this project? I think that's a great question that was asked by somebody in the comments of a previous video. If we can't define what success is, then what's the point of taking this on in the first place? In this case, if we can break down wood chips almost completely in six to 12 months, that's a success and that's fast based on my experience. So when I'm talking finished compost, I'm talking something kind of like this. You get the idea, right? Something that's easily identifiable as compost. If I showed you a picture of it, I want you to say compost, not wood chips. And again, I want it to arrive there naturally, not with me screening a bunch of the wood chips out and then saying, oh, now here's the compost that's left over. What do I actually think is gonna happen in this experiment? The manure will break down. The wood chips, I'm not so sure about that. When it comes to composting, you can think of it like the three little pigs and the big bad wolf. You have three houses, straw to brick. Straw is like your easy to compost things. They're easy to break down. The big bad wolf can just show up in front of that house and, and the house is gone, it's destroyed. That's what bacteria and fungi and other organisms can do to substances like manure that have a low carbon and nitrogen ratio. They're easy to break down. But when you take those same organisms and you put them in front of another house that's built with a higher carbon to nitrogen ratio, like wood chips at about 400 to one, they're sitting in front of that house and they're huffing and puffing until they're red in the face and they're eventually just passed out because they have nothing left to blow. They can't knock it down. They actually need Cyborg Wolf to come in there and try and take that house apart. And Cyborg Wolf, in this case, is really a fungal organism, a fungal cyborg. Well, Fungal Cyborg Wolf can come in and take down that brick house because he has special enzymes and tools to go in and pull that house apart brick by brick by brick. He's not going to try the brute force method of just blow it down. He's going to use things that he's learned over millennia to break down that exact substance. And it's slow, it takes time, but it has to be fungal cyborg wolf that does it. At the end of the day, I'm not sure we can actually speed up the decomposition of wood chips that much. I think to do that, you have to really reduce particle size and add some other organisms, decomposer organisms, into the system. And not just add them, but 
overload them into the system. Think putting a ton of mushroom spawn into the wood chips, and that's something we'll be doing in a future video, so stay tuned for that. You may be listening to this and saying, damn Diego, you're not very optimistic about this process, and honestly I'm not, I just don't think the wood chips are gonna break down that quickly. So why do the experiment? You do the experiment because you have to try different things to figure out what the results actually show. What are we gonna get at the end of the day? Maybe the wood chips don't break down completely, but maybe they're much faster than the control pile, and that's valuable information to know. So I don't think this is a waste. At the end of the day, I'll still be able to use this material in my garden, but just because I don't think it's gonna work doesn't mean I shouldn't do it. This is experimentation. We learn even when results aren't, you know, quote, positive or what we want. Learning what actually happened, learning how it plays out, it adds to your knowledge set. You can then reformat that into a different setup, a different experiment, and eventually get the results that you do want. So failure, it's not a bad thing. This is a learning experience, and I encourage you highly to play along at home on this one. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to follow along with the results of this experiment and see future videos in this series where we break down wood chips using cool things like fungi. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.